Welcome to Fields of Faith 2020. Even though this year Fields of Faith is going to look a lot different, the message is still the same. It's to put our hope in God and His Word. Fields of Faith was started by a group of students several years ago who challenged their peers to say, don't put your hope in the things of this world, but put your faith in Jesus Christ and stand on the truth of God's Word. Isaiah 40 verse 3 says, The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our Lord will stand forever. During times of adversity, our foundation is tested. And in Matthew 7, it talks about us building our life on the truth of God's word is like building our house on the rock. But if we build our life on the things of this world, it's like building our house on the sand. When storms come against those houses, the one that's built on the sand, it falls with a great crash. But I want to challenge you to put your faith and trust in God's word so that when adversity comes and storms come, you're able to stand strong because of his word and putting your hope and trust in him. You're going to hear from some students now across our area, and they're going to share with you what God has laid on their heart. And I would challenge you to take this video, share it with your classmates, your peers, and use it as a great opportunity to share Christ with those around you. Hey, I'm Josh Courtney. I'm number 55. I'm the left guard for the CE Bird Yellow Jackets. And I just want to tell you a little bit about my favorite verse in the Bible and how that applies to my life and how it applies to the game of football. Uh, my favorite verse is Proverbs 28.1. It says, For the wicked flee when no one is pursuing them, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. So for me that means in life, in daily life, when the devil's pursuing you, uh, stand bold, stand bold in your faith, and uh, don't cower in front of the enemy. So obviously for the game, that means I always think about that verse before I go into a game and how no matter who's lined up against me, uh, I'm not going to cower in front of it. I'm just going to take it on full, full on, full speed, play every down like the righteous and be bold as a lion in the game. So, yeah. My name is Jeremiah Evans. I attend Southwell High School, class 2024. These verses I'm going to read show me that God, God is leading me for his name's sake. You Lord my shepherd, I should not want. He made me to lay down in green pastures. He leads me beside still water. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And I have read Psalms 23 through 1, 2, 3. Thank you. Hello, my name is Christopher Bernard, and I'm a sophomore at Captain Shreve High School. I compete with their swim team and have been swimming competitively for over 10 years. I have been attending Woodridge Baptist Church for most of my life, and today I will share with you one of my favorite verses. The verse is Colossians 3.17. Whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. I really like this verse because it reminds me that my deeds are not my own and that, I'm working, and that God is working through me in all my successes. So this just helps to remind me that I need to give glory back to him when I do anything successful and whether it be in swimming if I win a race or if I get good grades in school or anything else I'm doing in life, that my actions are not my own and that it's God working through me. And hopefully if I express this and tell others that it's God working through me and that's why I'm being successful in whatever I'm doing, that I can lead them towards Christ and use it as a ministry example. Thank you. Hey, my name is Olivia Stringham, and I go to North Caddo High. I'm the one of the FCA huddle leaders, and I am a student athlete at my school, and I just love the Lord. And I just wanted to share a quick little message and some scripture with y'all tonight that's really been on my heart for a long time. Um, the first scripture I want to talk about is Mark 12, 30 through 31, and it says, The greatest commandment is to love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. And it says the second greatest commandment is to love your neighbor as yourself and that there is no commandment greater than these. And so this is just really on my heart because I think that um, a lot of the times Christians really leave out the love aspect of our relationship with other people, with strangers, with um, lost people, with each other. I just really think that we, um, we don't always get the love part right. And I just think loving people is such an important part of the Christian walk and it's such an important part of our ministry even if you don't consider yourself a minister 
or a leader, I just think for all Christians, loving people is the top priority. It's the number one thing that we should do. I mean, it says, I mean, the number one thing is love God, and then that we should also love people. And so I dug deeper in this. Well, okay, you tell me to love somebody. You know, it sounds easy. Just love people. Well, people get on your nerves, or people are annoying, or people are mean. Sometimes it's hard to love people. So I look to the Bible to see, okay, how am I supposed to love people? And these are my favorite Bible verses of all time. I memorized them because I knew this is something I needed to work on. And this is how it goes. It's 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8, the typical love verses. And it's, love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. It does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. Love never fails. And to me, that is just the most powerful scripture in the Bible. That's some of the most life-speaking scripture. And for myself to apply it to my life, what I would do is I would say, Olivia is kind. Olivia is patient. Olivia does not envy. Olivia does not boast. Olivia is not proud. And I would apply these things to my life and to my relationship with others and with strangers and lost people. And I really worked on loving people because I think... The number one thing we can do as Christians for our world and our community and the people around us is love. And so uh, I'm just glad to have this opportunity to talk to y'all. I hope what I said spoke to you. Also, I'm in my car because it's quiet in here and peaceful and you can hear me better. So um, God bless y'all. Bye. Well, tonight, the Louisiana high school football season finally gets underway. But for the Green Oaks Giants of Shreveport, Long before they tee it up against Booker T on Saturday, they've already faced their biggest opponent. They have faced a major crossroads in their life. We all face them. Uh, the emotions that build up after the death of a close friend or maybe even a family member. Will it be anger or peace, forgiveness or revenge? For many of 17-year-old Mignon Jackson's teammates, they made their choice right before the start of yesterday's practice. It's been extremely difficult. Not a day goes by that we don't think about Minion and what he brought to this team and just his attitude and just work ethic. On a week for most teams, full of excitement and a long anticipated return to the football field. For the Green Oaks Giants. Because we still work for something. As a team, we all still work for something. Their practices just haven't felt complete. Missing since August 26th, not even an hour after practice ended that night. 17-year-old Mignon Jackson was shot to death while on his way home. Definitely we saw a lot of anger. In that situation, it's easy to kind of turn away from God and kind of say, you know, why did you allow this to happen? For any coach or parent, you instantly begin to worry about the young men who are left to figure it all out. Why? Like, why happened? Like, like, it, ain't, it ain't feel real. So at every Wednesday practice, Coach Terrence Isaac has been bringing in an extra coach to work with the boys, local pastor Brian Wilson. And we call it our IV, which stands for Inspirational Vitamin. And he comes in and he, he just does a tremendous job getting these boys uh, to think about some things and think about their future and think about their life and what kind of life they want to lead. Especially now, with these kids facing the biggest crossroads of their lives, but in a city where we've seen our fair share of wrong turns and streets full of retaliation instead of hope. On Wednesday, a dozen of these football players made a giant of a decision. I honestly feel like it was time. I'm old enough to like, you know, realize what I need to do. It's why Israel Pierre, Camaro Mayo, and Michael Rachel took a short walk with Pastor Wilson to a spot just off campus, right across the street. And I think it was a relief for most of the boys and right to Sherika Marshall's front yard. Do you believe in God? Do you believe in Jesus Christ? In the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, amen. Wow. Where one by one, they made their decision of which road they were prepared to take. I did it for myself, because I was already taking a different path. <laughs> this is Michael making his spiritual intentions crystal clear, admittingly at a time 
when he's felt pulled in the wrong direction. Just depression and anger, and that can, that can lead people down the wrong path itself. Amen. And at a time for these coaches who are ready to lead these young men onto the field in honor of their number 14. Minion did everything full speed, everything, whether it was uh, a sprint, uh, whether running out here, coming to practice, he did everything full speed. So we wanted to get some shirts made, and we just wanted to say Minion full speed ahead. And then, you know, he, his last interview, he talked about going to the Dome. Aiden know did a good season. We got everybody back looking forward to going to state. That's love. For real. That's love. Anything you want to add? Nah, I'm good. So it was either Dome or bus. So our job is, is to get it done for him. Miss Marshall, who hosted yesterday's baptisms for the uh, for those 12 players, also has a son who plays on the team. Green Oaks takes on Booker T. Washington. What will be a very emotional game Saturday, 5 o'clock in the annual Soul Bowl game. God made you and loves you. His love is boundless and unconditional. God is real and he wants you to personally experience his love and discover the purpose of your life through a relationship with him. You cannot experience God's love when you ignore Him. People search everywhere for meaning and fulfillment, but not with God. They don't trust God and ignore His ways. The Bible calls this sin. Everyone has sinned. Sin damages your relationships with other people and with God. It keeps us from living the fulfilling life that God intended for us. The result, you are eternally separated from God and the life He planned for you. Sin doesn't stop God from loving you. Because of God's great love, He became a human being in Jesus Christ and gave His life for you. At the cross, Jesus took your place and paid the penalty of death that you deserve for your sins. Jesus died, but He rose to life again. Jesus offers you peace with God and a personal relationship with Him. Through faith in Jesus, you can experience God's love discover your purpose, and have eternal life after death. God has already done everything to show you how much He loves you. Through a relationship with Jesus Christ, he offers you fulfillment and eternal life. To begin, you must agree that you are sinful, accept God's forgiveness, and turn away from your sin. You choose to trust Jesus when you believe and confess that Jesus is Lord and surrender your life to Him. Are you ready to place your trust in Jesus? You can place your trust in Jesus by faith through prayer. Prayer is simply talking with God. God knows your heart and is not concerned with your words as much as He is concerned with the attitude of your heart. Here's a suggested prayer. Dear God, we thank you that you sent Jesus. We confess that we are a sinner and we are only saved by your grace. Today, Lord, I put my faith and my trust in you. I thank you that you love me so much that you died for me and you didn't stop there, you rose again. Thank you for this day, the day that I am staking claim that I'm on your team. I love you. In Jesus' precious and saving and holy name, I ask these things. 